Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So I'm so excited to do this file today. This is Canary from Hunter and Hunter. She is, right here you can see, she's a ruthless guardian, basically a badass. And I'm excited because I was looking for some really cool characters that I can showcase um, the skin tone collection that I'm curating. And so, in the original, I think the way she was drawn up, the initial um, uh, physical traits is she has really, really dark skin. When it was released, they lightened her skin and they changed up some colors, but I'm going to go with still the darker shade. I've already cut her out. I think I'm going to change up her hair though, because I have her hair as like black with um, the purple around it, but I'm thinking I might change up her hair color to be a purple, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm super excited to be um, doing this character. She's got a suit on, she's super cool. So let's go into design space. Um, whoa, what happened here? Why is it all black? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> now, the file is from The Salty Yankee and she's on Instagram. I've been a fan for a long time. Um, she's got great files. This file I actually asked her to do very specific to this project. So, and what I mean by that is you'll see, um, let's upload her so you can, I can show you um, and talk to you about it. So I was very specific about her hair being in separate pieces so that I knew I was going to be making her big. Um, so I didn't want to have to like slice and be creative in that sense. Um, I just wanted the file to work. So the file in this case, because I was able to work with the design portion of it, you can kind of see right here. So I had a part down the middle. I don't know. It's really hard to see because it's, it's all such dark colors right here. But actually here, let me do this so you can see it better. Um, I'm going to go to... This was so easy to work with. I mean, I almost feel like I need a custom file forever now going forward. All right, so this is the black background. I'm gonna change it to a lighter color just so that you can see where the part is, okay? So when we're looking at this, you can see I wanted to make sure I didn't have any issues with the suit. I wanted to make sure her ears were separated from her face as well as the chin so that her face could be 11 and a half inches. I'm not going to be doing any tricks with the paper. All my paper is going to be 12 by 12 cardstock, um, specifically the skin color, because that's going to be what I want to offer in this curated selection, which is coming out soon. I know I'm so excited. Um, all right, so you can see what I mean about the hair with, I wanted the hair to be in six separate pieces. Well, actually more, uh, 12, right? Because of the, the little separated beads right here. <clears throat> oh, and up here and here, sorry. A few more pieces. But the original design I think has like, for instance, this piece of hair right here all connected. And I didn't even wanna bother slicing it. I want it to be apart. I wanted the hair to be separate, so separated so that I can have them big. They will be seamless. So everything about this file was very specific in a sense that um, I cut down on the colors. I cut down on the pieces. I really wanted to make this easy and it was so easy to cut. So, um, all right. The first thing is to make her big. Now, what I should have done, I knew I wasn't gonna go 30 inches, so that's why I had it cut off like pretty high up on the suit. If I had wanted to do a bigger image, I would have done a longer torso because that, then that just gives me more room to make the, you know, for everything to be uh, bigger. If the face is 11 and a half inches here, I mean, this thing can only be so big, right? Because her face is like half of it. So, you know, she could be like 22 inches, probably about 22, 23 inches. Um, because here's the hair and plus this, it, it probably equals her face, if that makes sense. So, all right, let's change this to, I believe I changed the height to, I wrote it down somewhere, 22 inches. And let me show you why I went with 22 inches. Um, all right, so at 22 inches, you can, let's go look for her face. 
and her face is 11.5 inches by 10.44. So this image is only going to be 22 inches high. But what I did was I added her name down here because no, I, I don't watch these things. So I didn't know who she was. I was just Googling to see, you know, cool characters to do. Um, so I'm assuming many people might not know as well. So I wanted to do a banner, but being that she's like a guardian, kind of like this badass character, I didn't want one of those banners that, um, you know, that has like the little wave and stuff that you normally see I, that I use with the princesses, the Disney princesses. So in this case, what I did was let's um, make this just a little bit smaller so that we're not going back and forth. And then let's go to um, images. And I'm going to search banner. And so what I ended up doing was I did a straight banner and then I did her name in a typewriter font, you know, kind of like what the FBI does, like tick, 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 whenever they type up things like for TV shows. So um, that's what I did. It looks great. I haven't put it together yet, but I've already cut everything. So I'm super excited for this character. Um, all right, let's see what's going on here. It's kind of stuck, so I can't even hit enter to search for the banner. Um, this is not good. Okay, here we go. All right, so we want a straight across banner. And what is going on here? Okay. Um, I normally use something like this. Um, it's like, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> this is the one that I wanted to use. Like it felt more like matter of fact. <laughs> So let's select this one and add to canvas. And I accidentally selected this Holly thing. So we'll just have to delete that. But by adding on this banner, <clears throat> I ended up going almost all the way to, I think 27 inches. So, you know, it made a huge difference. So let me get rid of this little Holly thingy. Now on this banner, I knew I wanted to use this beautiful glitter paper that I have from Joanne's open cardstock. It's 12 by 24 inches. So I can understand if you don't want to do it this big, but basically I had something like this on her. Um, I want to make it a little bit smaller, something like this. Okay. Um, and then you can see when you add this, this whole thing is now oh, almost 29 inches. So this is pretty big. I like this too because it's flat. So it's going to stand on your table propped up against something. So this is a great banner to use. It also gives you a lot of height. Um, you can order 12 by 24 cardstock through Cricut. So I ended up using the white for the inside. So let's get started on how to do this. So uh, first thing is everything has an outline. So I also want this banner to have an outline because I want it to look like it was part of, you know, part of this image um, and not so weird. I like my offset to be 0 0.10. I like a thin offset. So I'm going to click apply and you can see here. So what you want to do is first let's grab this whole thing and let's center it. So go to align and I want to center it horizontally. So now it's perfectly lined up. Okay. So then, Oh, where did my um, outline go? It disappeared. All right. Let me get my offset. That was weird. You saw me apply it, right? All right. Oh no, not too much 0 0.10 okay so there is my outline so I'm gonna take this outline and then I'm also gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and I want to merge that with 
my pink outline. So I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna grab this. Okay, and I'm gonna weld it. Okay, now um, go to arrange and send to the back so that now the whole thing is one piece, okay? Then I wanna grab the banner and I'm gonna duplicate it because I actually want an, a bottom layer. So on this one, I'm gonna to go to contour and I wanna hide all. This is gonna be one big solid piece, okay? And I'm gonna make it white. And I'm gonna put it right here. So it's gonna cut out one big piece like this. I'm just gonna arrange it and move it backwards so you can see where it would stand. So see now like the suit's not popping through because I have a white solid piece that's gonna go down. I'm gonna have a black outline that is an outline for her whole thing, right? The white layer is gonna be underneath and then I'm gonna have this, this top layer is actually going to be silver. So I'm gonna do it like this. See, so see, it's starting to look good, right? And then my text is going to be, like I said, in the typewriter font. And I think I did standard. And I did it all caps. She's, oops, not Kabari, Canary. What happened? Oh, there we go. Okay. Can I make it bigger? It looks so good, right? I'm so excited. But th this, you you can add this banner to any character, right? Um, you know, for the princess ones, like I said, I like I usually like the curved ones. But this banner is great for anything. And you could put happy birthday. You can put the name. You could put, um, you know, uh, five or you know what however old they're gonna be um, I think it's a great way to add depth and also just to you know if you're gonna stand and take a picture next to it and the cakes not there then you know exactly where you are what this is for so it's a great way to um, to add height and description to your whole party um, all right so canary um, I did an offset so what I ended up doing was I did canary in same in this glitter that I know I love. So it's in this like gray. And then um, like usual, I like an offset. So I'm gonna go and click on offset and apply. And for the offset, I ended up doing just black. So perfect, it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. All right. So we're actually ready to just sort of like ungroup everything and see where what you need to do. So again, on the bottom on the banner, I actually am using 12 by 24 cardstock. But for the rest of her, I am not. Okay, so these are all pieces we can cut. Now, if you are not using the same as I am, I would just slice this in half. Ooh, not for the white, sorry. For the white, um, for the white, this is what I would do. Sorry, let me duplicate this. And let's go to contour. And we're gonna get rid of the outlines so that we have just these pieces. Um, and then I'm gonna duplicate it. We're gonna duplicate it uh, so that we have three copies and then we're gonna go to slice and remove the individual pieces. So I'm gonna go to contour and I'm gonna remove this piece and this piece so that I'm only left with this little guy. This little guy is five inches by 3.4. That's all good. Let's look at the next one. Come on, design space. It's not letting me click on anything. Okay, let me click on that. Okay, let me click on this one. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this one just in case. 
Okay, so on this one, I'm gonna go to contour and I'm gonna get rid of this one and this one. So we have the other side, the other leg, right? So here's the other leg. And now we need just the middle banner. So I'm gonna go to contour and get rid of the two legs. And let's see how big this piece is. So it's a little long. Um, I don't believe, let's see what it looks like diagonally. It's still too long, okay. Um, so for this piece, man, what would I do? Um, yeah, you, got, you have to slice it. Let me think about this. You know what? We can do this, hold on, let me see. So this is 14 inches, right? We're gonna slice off an inch from each side and that will leave you one inch, 12 inches, one inch, 14 inches, okay? I feel like no one's really gonna notice this little line right here. Um, let's see how thick is this border, this thing. So an inch, so this is, yeah, so this is gonna be, wait, this is gonna be 42 inches. So 41 inches is right here. So there's gonna be a line coming down right here and a line coming down right here. If I knew I was gonna be doing this, I would have made it smaller, so I would have been able to deal with uh, having the lines, okay? So that's what I would do. Slice it one inch here, one inch here. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And that's pretty much the only thing you need to do. The silver, if you use silver glitter cardstock, this thing you can slice in half and no one would even notice the seams. It, it, using the glitter cardstock, it will just be, um, it'll be pretty seamless. All right, the rest of this, let's see what we have. So when we go to ungroup everything, everything here, if you ungroup it, you should be able to cut fine and everything's ready to go. You actually don't need to slice or contour or anything. You can just um, go to ungroup and all the pieces will be moved apart. So the only thing that we have left to do is the background. Um, now, with the background, when you slice this up, because this is 27 inches by 29 inches, we obvious, obviously cannot cut this on the Cricut. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be slicing it into pieces, <laughs> chopping it up into pieces that your Cricut can cut and that you can use 12 by 12 cardstock to piece it back together. So we're gonna cut them into smaller pieces and then once you cut them on your Cricut, we're gonna reassemble and tape it all back together. I do have an SVG file um, to slice this up and to make it as seamless as possible. It's called the Grid of Squares. It's on my website, so you can go to www.theuselesscrafter.com and you can purchase the SVG file there. So I'm gonna go to Images and I have it. The nice thing is because I do a lot of these projects is now that the grid is, um, let me type in squares. Now that the grid is an SVG file, I'm gonna go to ownership and I just want uploaded. So these are, this is an uploaded SVG file. Whoa, should not have that many. I have not, what? Okay, 21 results, that's what I thought. It comes with a grid of nine and a grid of 16. You should not need any more than that. So I'm gonna insert this. So see, it's so quick. You don't have to redo it each time. The beauty of this grid of squares is that the squares are totally flushed with each other. So that means that there are no gaps or overlays. So it's all gonna butt up next to each other and it's gonna be perfect. And it helps us um, in the process of trying to make everything look seamless. Okay, so the only thing you need to do is once you upload it, I do like to go to my position feature up here and round to the nearest whole number. So in this case, I'm gonna round down to one and one. It's gonna go right here. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna to go to two and two, just so it's not so close to the edge, okay? The reason why I want it specifically on um, a whole number is 
if we make any adjustments, it's easy to line up. So yes, these nine squares are already perfectly flush with each other, but if we needed to move anything, we can now move them because we know these squares are 11 by 11. So we just start, you know, it's all about the grid, the axis, like the X and Y coordinate back to algebra, right? <laughs> back to elementary school math. Then what you want to do is you want to ungroup it because now each square is its own piece. And then we got to go and get our background. Um, and we're gonna bring it to the front so that we can make sure we're slicing it exactly where we wanna slice it. So I have her highlighted, the pink outline, and obviously we can change, oops, not that. We can change that color to anything. We're gonna move it, send it to the front. Did it not, it didn't send to the front. Arrange, send to the front. Okay, there she is. So I think the way, so I do not like it where it is right now, and I'll tell you why. When you slice this, look at this little braid right here. This little piece is going to be by itself, so we need to watch out for it. We need to tape it back together. It's so small, it's gonna be hard to tape together. So you wanna move this a little bit to something like, maybe something like this. So see, now all the braids are gonna to be together. Oh, this one's not good. Let me move this one back over there. So these three braids are gonna be all attached together. We have all big pieces. I like it. Um, um, I'm wondering, so originally, cause you know, when I first did it, um, I was able to, let's see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna move this down here. Whoa, there's an outline. We don't need the outline. I'm gonna delete that outline. I accidentally hit offset, if you guys remember. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back to where it was. Okay, and let's see if we can move these two squares so that we don't have to split the bottom into three pieces. Hopefully, just two. And it looks like it might work. Perfect. So instead of three seams, it's only gonna have two seams in the back. And actually, I think I wanna move this down a little bit because, yeah, I don't want this little piece right here. So I'm gonna move this down. There, that's much better. So you see now this is, this is all one piece, all one piece. This middle is one big piece. This is exactly what I want. So I'll make it rid of this square down here. And now we're gonna start slicing this big background into pieces that we can cut on the Cricut. So we're gonna take one square at a time with the image and slice. When you're slicing, I know I say this all the time in all my videos, when you're slicing, you can only slice two items at one time. So it's always gonna be one square and the image. So you see when I grab those two items, I can slice. I don't need to remove this piece. As long as my mouse is only picking up two items, then I can slice. So I'm gonna show you over here. See, I'm, I grab the square, and as soon as my mouse hits this pink part, I've grabbed two items and I can slice. If your slice button is grayed out, then that means you either only picked up one item <laughs> or you picked up more than two items. Yeah, uh, I it's it's very rare that I've run into a slicing issue that is not user error. I know design space is glitchy, so you never know what's working, what's not working, but when it comes to slicing, I feel like um, 99% of the time, it's probably user error. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, we only need to slice up a few more pieces and then we're gonna be done. I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, on the cutting mat or on the make it screen. All right, so we have this piece, I'm gonna slice that. And then what's left are these two pieces. So I'm gonna go from the top up here and you can kind of see it from, from the grid, right? Here are all my pieces. So I'm gonna go from up here down to this piece and slice. And then the next thing that I like to do is I do like to move, oh, I feel like something's glitchy right here. Okay, see, I don't know why this is showing up so big. Let's go to contour real quick. 
I don't know how it picked up that piece. Okay, yeah, that's 11 by 11. Um, okay, I'm gonna move these in place. And then I'm gonna delete this. We don't need the slice results. Okay, I'm gonna move this down here. And you see, it's also nice, like I said, with, with using this grid, all the pieces kind of butt up to each other, so it's really easy to put back together. And that's gonna be important. Anything to make it easier for us to do means that we're reassembling it to the best of our ability, and that means we're gonna, it, the seams are gonna be less noticeable. So it's like all these little things that add up that make a huge difference um, in the end, all the little details. All right, so let's get rid of this. And we are done. Let's go to the Make It screen so I can show you what that looks like. So if I haven't convinced you by now, um, I love using my 12 by 24 green sticky mats. And the reason is I like having 12 by 24. So in case I ever do use 12 by 24, anything, whether it's vinyl, adhesive vinyl, um, HTV, or 12 by 24 cardstock. Um, but the other reason why I like it is because it's the cheapest purchase. Um, so when you go and buy it on Cricut, I buy it in bulk. So I buy like, I don't know how many mats come with it, like 25 mats at a time or 50 mats. Um, and it's the cheapest purchase. So the mats end up being like, I've gotten it as low as like a dollar fifty some cents for a twelve by twelve portion because they're twelve by twenty four. So to make it comparable, I break it down in half, right? Because you could use it as a twelve by twelve mat. So anyway, it's the cheapest purchase, um, and I know people say, oh, it's too sticky, but then use it for something else. Use it with glitter cardstock because glitter cardstock is thicker. It can handle that stickiness. Uh, use it for your vinyl. And then when it gets less sticky, use it for your, you know, lower, um, your thinner cardstock. All right. So the white, the white is going to be long because I knew I was going to use 12 by 24 cardstock. But see this empty space here? I like to move things over so that if I, um, you know, you can save your scraps and oh, let me see if I can get that to fit. Make sure that nothing overlaps though, because you don't want it to cut into each other. But that way over here, this can all be usable scrap. You know, it's one nice long piece. So I do like to, I do tend to use up my empty space like this. Right, this can go maybe like this. design space is super slow right now you see how I'm moving everything over and that way my usable scrap is going to be four inches by 24 inches that'll be really easy to reuse later at some point well what happened here You can even cut into this piece right here if you wanted to. All right, so that's that. Let's look at this one. Anytime that there's open spaces right here, I definitely like to do this, right? So again, on this one, you're gonna have a lot of usable scraps. Here are, let's see, what's the next thing? That's from her necktie. So you can see these are all the pieces. Um, and I don't know if you know you can do this. You could, for instance, move this piece, click on the three dots and move object. You can move it to another sheet to consolidate and um, have less cuts. So let's see. I think that piece possibly would fit here. So I'm gonna say move to that mat, hit confirm. And if it doesn't, you just move it back. It's not a big deal. Yep. Make sure that they don't overlap though, because then you've ruined both pieces. So I'm gonna do this. See, and now they both fit. Um, see her face. Her face is good. 
um, I would just move, you know, let's get it all in a 12 by 12 piece. I think we can do that. And all these empty spaces, you can use that. So we can put this, this ear in here. Same thing with this piece. And let's see if we get her ear up here. Oops, maybe not. And design space is so slow today. It's not letting me do what I wanna do. Okay, and you can ride up to this 12 inch line. Just put your paper down there, okay? Um, all right. That's all that there is to it. For these pieces, they will fit. All you need to do is go diagonal, right? Diagonal, di going diagonal gives you a little bit more um, length. So you can make sure that you can cut all these with 12 by 12. Okay, you see how that is? And then down here, you could just move it down. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to be making it. I can't wait. Let me know if you have any comments or questions or a special request. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you.